so far we have considered the phenomena where if a sample space is given we are considering function of a uh, the function which is the mapping sample space to the real line. So, we are considering one characteristic at a time for example, it may be heights of the students, it may be marks of students in a test paper, it may be the life of an electronic equipment. However, so this uh, constitutes the values of a single random variable x. So, we have so far concentrated on the distribution of the random variable x. Many times we are not having uh, the luxury of considering only one characteristic, but several characteristics such as a patient goes to a doctor for a medical checkup. The doctor takes his say temperature. he may take his blood pressure, he may take his pulse rate and he may record his say weight. So, for different patients four quantities x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 are recorded. So, here this constitutes a random vector or jointly distributed random variable x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4. So, x is called a random vector. We may be looking at say x 1 as marks in paper 1, x 2 as marks in paper 2, say x 5 marks in paper 5. So, students are studying 5 subjects in a particular semester and each of them will get different marks in different test papers. So, for each student if we record x is equal to x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and x 5, then this is a random vector or a jointly distributed random variables x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and x 5. So, in general, if I am considering x as x 1, x 2, x k, then this is a function from omega into the k dimensional Euclidean space R k. The random variable x was a measurable function from omega into R that is one dimensional Euclidean space. So, a higher order random variable or a random vector is a function from it is a measurable function from omega into r k. So, x is measurable function that we have to ensure in order that the probability functions of x are well defined. Uh, for convenience, we will restrict attention to two dimensional case in the beginning. So, let us consider jointly distributed random variables x y. So, here x could denote the height of a newborn and y could denote the weight of a newborn baby. x y could denote the coordinates of a dart hitting a target. So, suppose this is the target we consider it as origin and the dart may hit anywhere. So, the coordinates x y of the dart hitting may be considered as a jointly distributed random variable. Suppose we are considering crop in a, a area. So, crop in a say rabi season and in a kharif season in a year. We may consider say export growth say x and say import growth y in a quarter of a year for a country. So, these are all examples of jointly distributed random variables. 
Now, naturally the question arises that how do we evaluate the probability distribution of x, y or how do we define the probability distribution of jointly distributed random variables. So, we have seen in the case of one variable, the description of the probability distribution depends upon whether the random variable is discrete or continuous. So, if the random variable is discrete, we have a probability mass function. If the random variable is continuous, we have a probability density function. Of course, for any type of random variable, we have the uh, facility of using a cumulative distribution function, but uh, that is not useful all the time. So, when we have a jointly distributed random variable, then there can be several cases. X may be discrete, Y may be continuous, both may be discrete, both may be continuous, X may be discrete, Y may be a mixture, X may be a mixture random variable, Y may be continuous, etcetera. So, in each case the description of the distribution may be of different nature. However, one may make use of the joint CDF that is probability of X less than or equal to X, Y less than or equal to Y. This is defined for all X, Y in the two dimensional plane. So, we will look at uh, the properties of this CDF later on. Firstly, let us consider the case when both x y may be discrete or both x y may be continuous. So, if both x and y are say discrete, that means the values that x y take in a space say x cross y, this is finite or at most countable. So, in this case the probability mass function of x y, this will satisfy. So, p x probability x equal to x, y is equal to y. Let me put here x equal to x i, y is equal to y j because the values are at most countable. So, we can enumerate them. This is p x y x i y j for all x y x i y j. Then this function is always non-negative for all x i y j. and the sum over all the values of the probability mass function is 1. Let us take one example here. Suppose a car showroom has 10 cars of a brand out of which 5 are good, 2 are having say defective transmission and 3 have say defective say steerings. So, we call it say d t and d s and good or g. Now, <laughs> if two cars are selected at random, let x denote the number of cars with defective transmission and y the number of cars with defective steering mechanism. So, here x y is a discrete random vector both x and y can take values 0, 1, 2. So, the probability distribution of x y can be described 
what is the probability that x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Now, this is possible if both of the selections are made from the good 5 cars out of the total selections from 10. So, this is equal to 10 by 45 or 2 by 9. Similarly, we can calculate probability x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. So, here it means that out of one good out of 5 good one good car has been selected and out of 3 cars with defective steering mechanism one has been selected out of total 2 selections of 10. So, that is equal to 15 by 45 or 1 by 3. In a similar way we can calculate all other probabilities and we can describe the probability distribution in the form of a tabular representation. The probability x equal to 0, y is equal to 0 is 10 by 45, the probability x equal to 0, y is equal to 1 is 15 by 45 the probability that x equal to 0, y is equal to 2 that can be calculated to be 3 by 45, the probability that x equal to 1, y is equal to 0 can be calculated to be 10 by 45, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, 6 by 45, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2 is not possible because total selections are only 2, so this is 0. Probability that x equal to 0, y is equal to x equal to 2, y is equal to 0 is 1 by 45 again 2 1 and 2 2 are not possible. So, this gives the joint distribution p x y of the random variables x y. You can look at various probabilities related to random variables x y from here. For example, if we ask the question what is the probability that x is say less than or equal to 1, y is less than or equal to 1. Then this is corresponding to probability of x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, probability x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, probability x equal to 1, y is equal to 0 and probability x equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So, this is equal to 10 by 45 plus 15 by 45 plus 10 by 45 plus 6 by 45 which is equal to 41 by 45. We may answer some other questions from here regarding the probabilities. For example, if we ask what is the probability x is say less than 2 that is probability x equal to 0 plus probability x equal to 1. Now, this relates to the probabilities of one random variable when the joint distribution is given. Now, notice here that if I sum rho wise then this will give probability x equal to 0, y is equal to 0, probability x equal to 0, y is equal to 1, probability x equal to 0, y is equal to 2. That means, this will give the distribution of x that is equal to 28 by 45, 16 by 45 and 1 by 45. Similarly, if I add the columns here, I will get the distribution of y. So, that is 21 by 45, 21 by 45 and 3 by 45. So, now probability x equal to 0 and probability x equal to 1 can be easily obtained as 28 by 45 plus 16 by 45 that is equal to 44 by 45. This process of adding row wise or column wise this gives rise to the individual distributions of x and y. They are known as marginal distributions. So, in general the marginal distribution of 
x is defined as this is obtained by adding the values of y over the range of this similarly the marginal distribution of y is obtained by adding the joint probability mass function with respect to xi so we can answer all the probability statements regarding individual distributions of x and y also from the joint probability mass function now there is one more thing when we have two random variables we may also look at the conditioning events for example if y is equal to 2 is given if y is equal to 1 is given what happens to the probability distribution of x this is known as the conditional distribution so we may define the conditional probability mass function of x given a value say y is equal to yj so this is given by the joint distribution of x and y at x i y j divided by the marginal of this where x i varies over x to see that it is a valid probability distribution let us sum over all the values of x i so if we sum over all the values of x i the numerator becomes the marginal distribution of y j which is the denominator so this will become 1 so this is well defined similarly the conditional probability mass function of y given x is equal to x i so that is equal to p y given x equal to x i is at the value y j it is defined to be the joint distribution divided by the marginal distribution of x i for values of y j over y once again you can see that it is a valid probability distribution if we sum over the values of y j the numerator here will become p x x i which is same as the denominator so it will give the value 1. So in this uh, given problem let us look at the conditional distribution say probability of y given x is equal to 0. So the values of y are 0, 1 and 2. What is the probability that y is equal to 0 given x equal to 0? So it is p 0, 0 divided by p x 0. Now p 0, 0 is 10 by 45 and p x 0 is 28 by 45. So this becomes 10 by 28. What is p y 1 given x equal to 0? This is p 0, 1 divided by p x 0. So that is equal to 15 by 28. Similarly, p y x equal to 0 at 2. This is p 0 2 divided by p x 0. That is 3 by 28. So you can see here the sum of the three probabilities 10 by 28, 15 by 28 and 3 by 28 gives 1. In a similar way, one may calculate probability distribution of say y given x equal to 1, probability distribution of y given x equal to 2. Notice here that if I say x is equal to 2, then only y is equal to 0 is possible. So probability of y is equal to 2 given x equal to 2, that will be 1. This is a degenerate distribution. This is p 2 2 divided by probability x equal to 2 that is 1 by 45 divided by 1 by 45 because if x equal to 2 is fixed then y cannot take any other value except 0 sorry this is not 2 this is 0 because the total number of cars that we are purchasing is uh, 2 therefore if one of them is having the value 2 then the other value has to be 0. Now 
in a <coughs> if both the random variables are continuous then we have joint probability density function so let us consider let x and y be both continuous so the joint probability density function of x y is f x y this is satisfying that it has to be a non negative function the integral over the whole range with respect to both the random variables is 1 so here in place of dx dy one may write dy dx also and if b is a measurable subset of r2 then probability of xy belonging to b will be given by the integral of the density over the set b integration may be in any order if the probability density function is given we may be able to answer any probability statement related to the distribution of xy the joint distribution or marginal distributions of x and y so like in the case of the discrete random variable one may talk about the marginal distributions of x and y so in the case of discrete we had summed over the other variable to get the marginal distribution of one variable in the case of continuous random variable we will have to integrate so the marginal distribution or marginal pdf of x so we will denote it by say fxx that is equal to integral of fxy with respect to y over the appropriate range similarly the marginal pdf of y fyy is equal to integral fxy xy dx let us take an example say fxy is equal to say 10 xy square 0 less than x less than y less than 1 it is 0 elsewhere let us analyze this cdf first of all is it a valid cdf so you can see that the values are non negative and if i take the integral over the full range so here if i integrate with respect to x first then it will be 0 to y and then the range of y will be 0 to 1 basically the range of the the distribution is defined over the interval 0 to 1 on the half side that is x less than y so if this is x axis this is y axis so we are on this side so you can easily see that this is 5 y to the power 4 dy which is equal to 1 so it's a valid probability density function we may look at say marginal distribution of x so that is obtained by integrating with respect to y so if we integrate with respect to y the range of x y will be from x to 1 this gives 10 by 3 x into y cube from 1 to uh, from x to 1 that is 1 minus x cube so the marginal distribution of x is given by 10 by 3 x into 1 minus x cube similarly we can obtain the marginal distribution of y that is integral of 10 xy square dx now here the range of x will be from 0 to y for a given y the range of x is 0 to y so 0 to y so this is equal to 
5 y to the power 4 for 0 less than y less than 1 and 0 elsewhere. So, the marginal distributions of x and y are easily obtained. The conditional PDF of x given a value of y is equal to y is defined by f x given y is equal to y that is the joint distribution of x y divided by the marginal distribution of y. Of course, this is defined for f y non-zero. So, in a similar way the distribution of y given x that is defined as the joint distribution divided by the marginal distribution of x and of course, this f x should not be 0. So, in this problem we can talk about say the conditional distribution of x given y So, the marginal distribution is 5 y to the power 4. So, 10 x y square divided by 5 y to the power 4 that is equal to 2 x by y square and the range of x is 0 less than x less than y for a value of y between 0 and 1. It is 0 elsewhere. You can check that it is a valid distribution if we integrate from 0 to y we will get y square. So, y square by y square will be 1. Similarly, we can define the conditional distribution of y given x here. So, that is 10 x y square divided by the marginal distribution of x which we obtained as 10 by 3 x into 1 minus x cube. So, divided by 10 by 3 x into 1 minus x cube that is equal to 3 y square by 1 minus x cube. Here the range of y is from x to 1 for a value of x between 0 and 1 and 0 elsewhere. So, given the joint probability density function of x and y, we are able to obtain the marginal distributions of x y, the conditional distributions of x given y and y given x. And therefore, we can answer all the probability statements regarding the joint probabilities of x y, the individual probabilities related to random variables x and y or the conditional probabilities related to x and y. So, in this particular case, let us look at some of the such questions. So, suppose I say what is probability x is less than 1 by 4 what is the probability that say y is greater than 3 by 4? What is the probability that say x plus y lies between 0 and half? What is the probability that x is less than half given y is equal to 3 by 4? What is the probability that y is less than half given x is equal to say 1 by 4. What is the probability that say 0 less than x is less than half and 1 by 4 less than y less than 3 by 4. So, these are various statements regarding the marginal, conditional or the joint probabilities of x and y. So, in the context of this particular problem, let us answer these questions. So, let us number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, what is probability x less than 1 by 4? So, this is related to the marginal distribution of x which we calculated as 10 by 3 x into 1 minus x cube for x lying in the range 0 to 1. So, this is 0 to 1 by 4 10 by 3 x into 1 minus x cube d x. So, this can be evaluated easily 
10 by 3. Now, integral of x is x square by 2. So, this is giving you 1 by 32 minus integral of x to the power 5 that is x to the x to the power 4 that is x to the power 5 by 5. So, 1 by 5 into 4 to the power 5. So, this can be simplified. Similarly, if we look at probability y greater than 3 by 4, then this can be obtained from the marginal distribution of y. So, if we answer this question probability y greater than 3 by 4, that is integral f y from 3 by 4 to 1, because the range of y is from 0 to 1. So, this is equal to integral 3 by 4 to 1 5 y to the power 4 dy. So, this is y to the power 5 that is 1 minus 3 by 4 to the power 5. If we look at the third problem, here we need a joint probability statement regarding the distributions of x and y. So, this can be calculated from the joint distribution of x and y. So, this is integral where x plus y lies between 0 to half of 10 x y square d x d y. Of course, this can be d y d x also depending upon the order in which we integrate. So, let us determine the range of integration. the density is defined over now here we are saying x plus y is less than half so the line x plus y is equal to half that is this one so the region of integration is reduced to this so, this is half, this is half. So, this point is actually 1 by 4. So, if we integrate firstly with respect to y, then the range of integration is from x to, so this on this line, this is x plus y is equal to half. So, on this line y is equal to half minus x and the range of x is from 0 to 1 by 4. So, this is 10 x y square d y d x. So, this is 10 by 3 0 to 1 by 4 x. Now, this is y cube. So, it is half minus x cube minus x cube. So, this is a simple integral and one may be able to evaluate this quickly. So, here you can observe that if we want to determine certain probability related to the joint distribution, we should determine the region of integration from the description of the distribution that is given there. So, if we had if we wanted to integrate in a reverse way, then Firstly, you did split it into two portions. In this portion, x is from 0 to y and y is from 0 to 1 by 4. In this portion, x is from 0 to half minus y and y is from 1 by 4 to half. If we do not see the carefully this region, then we might have integrated from um, say 0 to half minus y for x and then for y between 0 to 1 etcetera. So, that would have been a wrong region here. Let us look at the conditional probabilities also. So, if we are calculating probability of x less than half given y is equal to 3 by 4. Now, this can be evaluated from the conditional distribution of x given y is equal to 3 by 4. Now, conditional distribution of x given y is equal to y we have already determined. 
So, here if we substitute y is equal to 3 by 4, we get the appropriate distribution. So, firstly we write down the conditional distribution of x given y is equal to 3 by 4. So, this is obtainable from here, this is 2x divided by in place of y we put 3 by 4. So, we get 9 by 16 that is 32 by 9 x for 0 less than x less than 3 by 4 and 0 elsewhere. So, now if we want to calculate probability of x less than half given y is equal to 3 by 4, it is the integral from 0 to half 32 by 9 x dx. So, which is 16 by 9 1 by 4 that is 4 by 9. In a similar way, if we want to calculate probability of y less than half given x equal to 1 by 4, then we use the conditional distribution of y given x and then we substitute x is equal to 1 by 4 here. So, the conditional distribution of y given x equal to 1 by 4 that is obtained as 3 y square divided by 1 minus 1 by 64. So, that is 64 by say 21 y square where the range of y is from x to 1. So, it will be from 1 by 4 to 1 and 0 elsewhere. So, if we are looking at the probability of say y less than half given x equal to 1 by 4, then this will be integral from 1 by 4 to half because the range of y is from 1 by 4 to 1. So, it cannot be from 0 to half. So, this is 64 by 21 y square dy that is equal to 1 by 8 minus 1 by 64 that is equal to 1 by 9. Lastly, probability of 0 less than x less than half, 1 by 4 less than y less than 3 by 4. So, once again we look at the region here, this is the region of the density. So, if we say x is between 0 to half, we consider this line and here y is from 1 by 4 to 3 by 4. So, basically we have this particular region. Let us determine it separately because this will confuse the region with the earlier one. So, the line x equal to y is this. So, x is between 0 and half and y is from 1 by 4. So, that will be somewhere here to 3 by 4. So, this is the region. Now, here we will have to integrate the density into two parts. So, we may split it into this type of portion. So, this point is 1 by 4, this point is 1 by 2, this point is 1 by 4, this point is 3 by 4. So, if we integrate the density 10 x y square d x d y, then in this region x is from 0 to 1 by 4 and y is from 1 by 4 to 3 by 4. Plus, in this portion, we may consider it with respect to y first, y is from x to 3 by 4 and x is from 1 by 4 to half. So, this integral can be evaluated. So, this way the questions regarding the joint probabilities of x y, the marginal probabilities of x and y or the conditional probabilities of x given some value of y or y given some value of x can be determined 
from the joint distributions. So, I give certain exercises here. Consider say the joint distribution is equal to say 1 by y, 0 less than x less than y less than 1, it is equal to 0 elsewhere. So, let us look at the marginal distribution say f x that is equal to integral 1 by y with respect to y. Now, the range of y is from x to 1. So, that will give us minus log of x because it is log y. So, log 1 is 0 and here the range of x is from 0 to 1. We should not think that this is a negative value actually x is between 0 to 1. So, this will be a log of x is a negative value. So, minus log will be a positive value. Similarly, the marginal distribution of y can be obtained So, that is simply x and therefore, we will get y minus 0 that is equal to 1. So, the distribution of y is simply uniform distribution on the interval 0 to 1. Suppose, we want to answer a question regarding say probability of x plus y greater than half. So, once again we look at the region of integration. So, x plus y is equal to half is this line. So, the region of integration for this part is this, which we can again split into two portions. Here x is from half minus y to y and y is from 1 by 4 to half plus in this portion x is from 0 to y and y is from half to 1. So, this can be evaluated and the sum of the two integrals is 1 minus half log 2. Suppose x denotes the amount of kerosene oil in say thousands of liters in a tank at the beginning of a day and y is the amount which is sold during the day. So, f x y is suppose given by say 2, 0 less than y less than x less than 1. So, if we are considering say proportion here, the unit is proportion and 0 elsewhere. So, find marginal densities of x and y, find probability y is less than say x minus half find probability say x minus y is say greater than 1 by 4 find probability y is greater than 1 by 
टू गिव इन एक्स इज इक्वल टू थ्री बाई फोर फाइन प्रॉबिलिटी से वाई इज लेस देन हाफ एक्स एक्सेट्रा सपोज एक्स एंड वाई डिनोट कंपोनेंट लाइफ ऑफ सर्टन इक्विपमेंट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ टू कंपोनेंट्स लेट एस लुक एट से मार्जिनल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हियर देन दिस इज वाई ई टू दावर माइनस वाई वन प्लस एक्स डी वाई सो इट इज इक्वल टू वन बाई वन प्लस एक्स होल स्क्वायर इफ वी कंसिडर से मार्जिनल ऑफ वाई देन वी इंटीग्रेट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स देन दैट इज इक्वल टू ई टू दावर माइनस वाई वाई ग्रेटर देन जीरो सपोज आई से फाइंड प्रॉबिलिटी एक्स ग्रेटर देन टू वाई ग्रेटर देन टू सो इट विल बी ऑप्टेंड बाई इंटीग्रेटिंग द ज्वाइन डेंसिटी फ्रॉम टू टू इन्फिनिटी so after integration of this term we get 1 by 3 e to the power minus 6 in the case of uh, univariate random variables we considered various characteristics of the random variables such as its mean variance higher order moments the measures of skewness kurtosis the median quantiles etc so in a similar way we can talk about the characteristics of the joint distributions also so first of all we introduce the joint cdf so the joint cdf of a bivariate random vector xy is given by f xy as probability of so we can see here that this function gives information about the type of the random variables that x and y are as well as it will yield the individual cdfs of x and y also so for example if i take limit of fxy as say y tends to infinity this gives the marginal cdf of x if we take limit as x tends to infinity of the joint cdf this gives us the marginal cdf of y if we take either of x tending to minus infinity or y tending to minus infinity we get zero f x y is non decreasing in each of x and y f x y is continuous from right in each of x and y we can also consider say a cell in two dimensional space suppose this is the point a b this is x this is y and this is say c d so if we want to look at the probability of this region so probability of a less than x less than or equal to b c less than y less than or equal to d then this is equal to f of c b d minus f of a d minus f of b c plus f of a c
so the probability of a rectangular region can be evaluated in terms of the CDF. Uh, since we are able to obtain the individual distributions from the joint CDF, we can find the individual nature of the random variables that is whether they are discrete, continuous or mixture random variables from here. Moreover, if the random variable x y is continuous throughout then capital F x y will be absolute continuous in both of them, both of the arguments and the derivatives with respect to x and y will give you the probability density function of x and y. So, this uh, joint CDF is a, a quite useful function for calculating various characteristics of the uh, random variable in the joint distribution x and y. So, let us look at uh, the other features of a So, this is the right continuous behavior in both the arguments, the non-decreasing nature in both the arguments. In case of the discrete random variable, the probability of a point can be calculated in terms of the differences taken by the CDF. So, if we are looking at say probability of x equal to x i, y is equal to y j, then we can consider it as probability of x less than or equal to x j, y less than or equal to y j minus probability of x is less than or equal to x j minus 1 y is equal to y j etcetera and we can express in terms of the uh, joint CDF at these points. So, so in general the joint CDF gives information about uh, the complete information about a jointly distributed random variable. So, we will discuss about uh, other properties such as product moments and the correlation coefficient between the random variables in the coming lectures. Thank you.